Taking your bike off-road, exploring and having fun is at the heart of gravel riding. But you don't need all of the latest kit, and to be honest, you don't even need a dedicated gravel bike. A plenty of road bikes will actually be more than up to the job of riding off-road. Over my years of off-road riding experience, through making mistakes and trial and error, I've come up with all the little things that can help make your off-road riding, your gravel riding, as smooth and as easy as possible. I've brought my esteemed colleague Rupert here. He's a newbie gravel rider. And we're gonna go through some of the mistakes and how to avoid them when it comes to gravel riding. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is to do with tire pressure. Probably the most important thing to consider when it comes to gravel riding. So what pressure should I run my tires at then, James? Well, the big thing with tire pressure, especially when it comes to gravel riding, is it's all a balancing act. It's a balancing act between traction, comfort and rolling resistance. A low tire pressure will give you more traction and comfort. But too low and you run the risk of punctures and damage in your rims. I see what you mean because if I was to ride gravel, I live in London, to get out to the trails I'm going to have to do a pretty long slog on quite a lot of tarmac. So I need some quite high pressures in my tyres, otherwise I'm going to get really tired. Yeah, this is the biggest thing. There's sadly not one perfect solution that works for every single person. So for yourself, then a higher tyre pressure is probably going to be a better option if you're only doing a lot of sort of light gravel riding. However, for myself, where I go and do a lot of like proper forest tracks, a lot of mountain bike trails, actually a lower tire pressure is better because for me, it's traction and comfort is more important than speed. To start off with, what I'd recommend is you look at the manufacturer of your tires and then go to their websites. Because a lot of those websites actually have little tables where you can actually either see what tire pressure to start off with, depending on what tire you've got, the width, and also your weight, or they have a little drop down so you can put in all of your information and it'll give you recommended starting points. And as I said, those are starting points. And then it's a question of basically experimenting. Now, we're not talking about just as you did, like sort of letting loads of air out. We're talking about maybe checking it and change it by one or two PSI at a time. See how it feels. You're looking for that balance. As I said, it's all about balance. And the other thing to consider as well is obviously, Tires are different widths, they're different volumes. As a rule of thumb, the bigger the tire you've got, the lower the pressure you can go. But it's just one thing to consider. So if you've got a narrow tire, then you can't really run it at too low a pressure. The next thing for us to consider is your tire choice. Now with a road bike, it's simple. Almost every single tire looks the same and performs the same. Whereas on a gravel bike, you can have so many different types, it becomes really, really confusing. So my tires, they look a lot different to your tires. Yeah, in a way, gravel bikes have more in common with mountain bikes than road bikes when it comes to tire choice, especially the tread patterns. And there are so many different things. As you said, you've got a very smooth rolling tire tread there, and I've got a much more aggressive, knobbly tire here. And they're designed to do different things. And for this, my tip here is to consider where you ride your bike. Now, if you do a lot of very smooth gravel rides or just canal tow paths and so on, then a smooth rolling tire is gonna feel faster and it's gonna perform really, really well on those. Whereas if, like myself, you do a lot more in proper woodland or single track or even like rocky mountains, well, a treaded tire with more aggressive tread will give you way more traction and way more confidence when it comes to cornering. But the important thing is not to worry if you don't have the right tire choice. It's all about considering where you're riding and basically mitigating the situation. So if you're riding properly off-road with a tire like this, then you need to be aware that you might have bits where it's gonna be slippery and lose traction. So either just take a bit more caution or just even lower the tire pressure to get a bit more traction. Third tip is saddle height. I think mine might have been a little bit high. So in general, it's probably good to keep your saddle at around about the same height as you would your road bike, just from a pedaling efficiency point of view. However, 
If you're gonna be riding a bit more sort of technical and bumpy terrain, you might wanna consider dropping your saddle height a little bit. 10, 15 mil, it doesn't need to be a huge amount, but that will give you a lot more confidence when it comes to tackling that harder terrain. And more importantly, as you just found out, it's gonna make it easier to get off the bike for those bits where inevitably you might need to. Lowering your saddle height will also lower your center of gravity, which will make you feel a lot more confident on the bike when you're riding technical terrain, especially downhill. It will stop you from feeling like you're gonna to be toppling over the front and give you more traction as well. And for those really steep bits, it means it'll allow you to actually slide yourself off the back a lot easier. My second ride position tip is all about the front end. Going off-road is not the time to slam your stem, and a gravel bike often works best with a slightly higher handlebar position. Bringing your handlebars up just a little bit allows you to center yourself in between the wheels, which is better for traction, but also it means that it puts you in a bit more of an upright position, which allows you to look further ahead so you can see what obstacles are coming, and also allows you to keep a little bit of movement in your arms, because with no suspension, you kind of need something that's going to help you to deal with all the obstacles and the bumps. So allowing your arms to be nice and loose means that you've got more ability to actually deal with roots, rocks and other bumps that you can find on the trails. Riding off-road is not the time to use a traditional road bike pedal and shoe setup. Most people opt for mountain bike, clipless pedals and shoes. This is preferable because there's going to be times when you're going to need to get off your bike and push when you're off-road. Mountain bike shoes have a recessed sole where the cleat goes and loads and loads of tread, so it makes it easier to get traction and to walk. And of course, it means you don't have to worry about putting your feet down at any point. Joking aside though, most roadies would consider a stiffer sole is better when it comes to riding. Is that the case for gravel riding too? Yeah, you can always use like a stiff mountain bike race shoe like Rupert has on here but sometimes that can be a little bit uncomfortable for long distances. In this case a softer sole shoe is going to be a good option and for some people if you want to you can even use flat pedals and trainers just to get the confidence and to make sure that you can just walk around whenever you want to. My next tip is to do with water bottles. Well really water bottle cages and how important it is to choose good bottle cages or to have any at all, probably. It's really important that you've got good cages on a gravel bike because when you're riding off-road, not only do you find yourself drinking a lot more, but you find yourself bouncing around a lot more. And there's nothing worse than making it down a really cool section of trail, look down and your bottle is missing. Not only are you littering, but it means then you're pretty screwed for the rest of the ride when it comes to your hydration. So it's important that you choose bottle cages that hold your bottles really, really securely. And if you wanna test it, make sure you test your bottle cages with full bottles because there's a difference in terms of the weight. And if you choose different size bottles, put the bigger bottle on the vertical because it means it's gonna have less chance of bouncing out. My next tip is actually taking a cue from the scouts and it's be prepared, or in this case, carrying spares and tools. Compared to riding a road bike, riding a gravel bike gives so many more opportunities for a mechanical. Punches are the obvious thing because you're riding in places where there's lots of obstacles and dirt and debris, but all of that bouncing and rattling can shake apart your bike like nothing else. Bolts can come loose, you can snap chains, and even snap spokes quite easily when you're on rides like this. So it's important that you carry enough spares and tools and also know how to use them to be able to safely carry on your ride. So what should I have on me right now for this gravel ride? Well, the very, very basics you should have would be an inner tube, a pump, and obviously a multi-tool that has a chain tool on it. Now, the great thing with gravel bikes is it's cool to have a bag or cool to have somewhere to store these things. So it's really easy to keep these things on your bike. So in mine, in this one here, I've got a little spare inner tube. Now, obviously this is probably gonna be a bit small for these. So I've got another inner tube here. I've then got a CO2, so a little inflator. And then I've got this really cool little device here. And that's got my multi-tool with a chain tool on it. But if you don't have that and you're just riding a normal kit like this, then obviously you can carry things, you can carry your pump. Two other really important things to carry that 
people really do forget all the time is to carry a couple of zip ties and some tape. Now, the great thing is zip ties can be used to fix almost anything that falls off your bike. So they're kind of really good to have with you. And tape, well, yeah, a bit of electrical tape can help if you get a tear in your tire or any other jobs as well. I carry my tape on my pump. Yeah, and then zip ties are in here as well. Or you can keep them inside your handlebars. You know, I once, and I kid you not, I once zip tied my chain ring back onto my bike after all of the chain ring bolts fell out 25 kilometers from home. So there's two things to learn from that. Number one, zip ties can do anything. Number two, never get Rupert to fix your bike. Well, I hope these tips will go some way towards helping you get the most enjoyment out of your gravel riding. But if you do have any questions, then do leave them in the comments section below and James will do his best to answer them. I'm probably not best suited for that. But if you have any tips as well, leave them there too. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. It does really help us and we'll be back soon with some more great content. Here come some boys. One Here boy. Here come some Oh, he's boys. clipped in on both. That's what all the mountain bikers do. Is it? Yeah, that's what, what I see the shredders doing. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not a shredder. Between the two wheels, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it does, yeah, it does. Oh man, I nailed oh. it. Yeah.